Hi, I'm Melania, Senior Vice President of AI Strategy at Data AI. To help celebrate this year's International Women's Day, we invited a few of the many inspiring women leaders in the mobile apps and gaming world for a series of discussions on the amazing impact and contributions they make every day in the mobile industry. Today, we are chatting with Jessica zestar Postrick. She is currently the head of strategy at Scopely, one of the largest privately held mobile-first video game companies. She has the fun responsibility of driving strategy, business operations, market and competitive insights, and central analytics across the Scopely portfolio of games, including hits such as Monopoly Go, that everybody knows very well, Stumble Guys, Star Trek Fleet Command, Marvel Strike Force, and more. Hi, Jessica. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Please, just to set the context, just give us a quick overview of, of your role and what you're doing today at Scopely. Yeah, I mean, you covered some of this. So I run strategy, which is super fun because I get to engage on kind of what you think of as like big S strategy, which is where is the company going over the next three years? What's our vision, our mission, our goals? Um, but I also get to do a lot of fun things that interact with our games, everything from how do you cascade goals down the organization, things like central analytics. My team gets to set a lot of our KPIs and we look at that across the board. Um, we do a lot of competitive insights and market research, which is super fun. I get to work with wonderful people um, like yourself, Melania, and other folks at Data AI, which is always cool. Um, and then we do a variety of strategic and business operations projects. So it covers the whole gamut. I mostly focus on the live game portfolio, but I also get to see and interact with a lot of our slate games too. So it's a ton of fun. Thank you for sharing. And and definitely talking about impact, like there's so much that you and your team uh, do and, and bring to life. How did you get started in uh, in this career? Yeah, so game, I'm not, I was not in gaming originally. Um, when I graduated university, I did chemical engineering, didn't really want to be a chemical engineer, so I went into consulting. And it took me a while to find my way into gaming. I've actually, I've only been here maybe, you know, just under a decade now. Um, and I knew almost no one in the gaming industry uh, when I started. And for me, I was looking to jump out of consulting. I knew that wasn't my passion. Um, I wanted to kind of get into a company and really own something. And so I had done a lot in the tech and the media space. And so I was kind of looking there or something adjacent. I played a lot of games and so I liked gaming. Um, and I wanted something that I had more passion for. So I kind of decided I'm just gonna look and see what I can do. And so I did a lot of networking to try and find people in gaming, learn about the industry. I was very blessed that I was able to find a role at Activision Blizzard in corporate strategy. So it was a really good handoff for me because I already knew how to do strategy, but I was learning a new industry. Um, and I went from there and I've never looked back. I'm super excited. Wow. Uh, congrats on following the passion and being courageous of making these big changes to to just find that place where where you can really create and bring the, the best of yourself and, and just be happy with it. So what kind of advice would you give to women that are looking to start a career now in app development, gaming development? Yeah, so this is going to sound trite, so I'll go into it more. But it, I, for me, it really comes down to networking. And you hear a lot about that as a buzzword, what it means, the fact that women, women maybe aren't doing it as much as men. I feel like a lot of times women spend that extra minute, those extra hours really perfecting what they do in their craft. Um, and But for me, networking was the way I cracked and got into gaming. And specifically what I meant by that is I was on LinkedIn. I was like trolling LinkedIn because I didn't really have anyone in my network that was in gaming. So I was looking for that second order connection, that third order connection, um, using like my university connections, people from prior work that maybe they knew someone in gaming. And once I started looking a little further afield, I started finding a couple more people. And then I would ask for warm intros. I was like, hey, person X that I haven't talked to honestly since university, I think very highly of you. Would you mind just you know passing along my name? I really want to just do an introductory chat. I wasn't looking for a job. I was just looking to learn. And when you just want to get coffee or virtually on Zoom with someone just to learn about what they do and their job and their industry, most people said yes. I got a 
whole bunch of information about the industry. I started getting to know a lot of people and most people were willing to introduce me to one more people on that chain. And eventually, like, I think honestly, I talked to like a hundred people in the gaming industry that way, knowing almost no one. And eventually I got to know the industry a lot more. I got a lot smarter. I started figuring out what I wanted to do, what I might be good at doing. And that eventually turned into interviews and a job offer. So I, I know it sounds really trite, but I really do recommend trying to talk to as many people as possible. It's a pretty networked industry and most people are pretty, pretty positive and optimistic about it and are happy to pass you along and are happy to spend some time explaining what they do or more about the industry. Thank you for walking us through that. Like a true example of keeping your eyes on the prize and, and what you're passionate about and also putting yourself out there and saying, hey, maybe I just want to learn. I am not looking for anything in particular right now. Let's just connect. I just want to learn. And uh, excellence, that's, that's a great example. And I'm, I'm hoping our, um, our audience here is, is taking notes and learning from that. Um, if we look back at various moments in, in your career, what would you say is the best piece of advice you have been given? So I'll have to go back a while. Probably the best piece of advice I got given was kind of how to find a, a good job, right? How to find something that you know you're going to do well and that's going to set you up well for your career, right? Which I think is what most people want, right? They want to be doing something that they're good at, but that they like and that they find meaning for and have pr progression. And so for me, it was this concept of it's not enough just to look for things you're good at, but also look for things you're passionate about. And it's that sweet spot that really makes um, life a lot more fun when you go to work every day. And it makes you a lot better at what you're doing as well. And so for me, what I've always tried to do in my career since then is look for jobs or look for opportunities, even within jobs, where it's something that I think I can do or that I might have skills that I can apply and really excel there, but also is something that is exciting to me. And that exciting to me is very different for different people. For me, the content of what I work on matters a lot. And so that's why I looked at gaming because I was just passionate about that industry. For others, sometimes it's actually the function that they're in or it's the people that they work with. And not to say that any of that is not important for all of this, but everyone has that one thing that they're really passionate about that is supersedes everything else. And finding that intersection um, is really what I look for. And that advice early on in my career was incredibly helpful as I thought about the new role I'm going to take or the new opportunity I wanted to reach for. That's a great reminder that we should not just focus on what we think would look good on the resume or what would might what might objectively make sense as the next step, but also what we are passionate about because that energy then just creates a lot more motivation. It, it creates a lot more pleasure at, at the workspace. And that's that's really good to, to hear that you did continuously kind of follow, uh, follow that approach. If we flip it and kind of look at what type of obstacles or hurdles you had to overcome as a, as a woman in this industry, what would you uh, talk about here? Yeah, I, you know, for me, one of the things I think is challenging about this industry, and, and honestly, it's it's all industries you go into, in all honesty, is like gaming is a bit of a, like, can seem very closed and very complicated outside in. And so some of this is around, like, just how do you get smart fast? Is it ton of acronyms? There's a lot of complexity. If you're in mobile versus PC versus console, if you're in esports or consumer pro, there's like a lot going on in this industry. And so one of the things I think a hurdle is like, well, how do you get smart on it? And how do you feel comfortable reaching out to get smart? Because just reading something's never gonna, never gonna give you enough intel, right? And so I think one of the hurdles and one of the things to think about is like, well, how do you get smart? Who do you lean on? How do you think about mentorship and sponsorship? And how do you think about individual one-on-one -on -one communications in a way to like bolster that knowledge so you can do that at the fastest way possible and kind of hit the ground running when you're in this industry. Thank you. And that definitely ties up with what you were mentioning earlier about just learning and kind of making sure that you're following your, what you're passionate about and and how to get just continuously better and and bring that back into the, the a successful career. Um, what's next for or what do you see next for women in the gaming world? 
I, look, I'm really excited. I'm really bullish on this. I think there is so much opportunity. It's an industry that's growing. And so there's always more things happening, um, whether or not that's at getting in at the ground level or at anywhere along the line. Um, I think it's there's a lot more visibility now. There's a lot more support. There's a lot more people just talking about it, um, which opens up opportunities for people to get more involved. I am a big believer in this, and I've seen tons of research on it. The more diverse your teams are, the more diverse organizations are, the better they are, right? Not just from a cultural point of view, but just from like even a financial rewards impact point of view. So I think the industry has never been poised to have more success in this field. Um, and I'm really excited to see what the next couple of years bring. Excellent. Uh, th that's that's really good note for, for us to kind of wrap up here. More opportunities, the industry really being poised to, to get that, uh, the benefit of diversity. So thank you so much, Jessica, for joining us today in uh, our discussion on women leaders in the mobile space. And thank you everyone for watching. If you enjoyed this, be sure to check out Data AI's other inspiring conversations in this series celebrating International Women's Day.